Well, hello. <clears throat> Welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament. I'm reading Philippians, and I got up to chapter 2, verse 12. I'm doing these in smaller chunks because the Greek is somewhat more difficult, and also there are various debates about how to translate certain parts. So, verse 12, Hosti agapetoi mu, kathos pantoti hupakusati, Mehos en te parousia mu monon ala nun polumalon en te apousia mu metaphobu kai tromu ten hiaton solterion kat ergadzes there. So hosti, um, so that um, my beloved cathos for kata plus hos just as pantoti. Uh, always, and hupaku, hupakuo is to obey, normally takes a dative, it's got an object, but here there's no object, so just as also, um, uh, just, sorry, just as you always obeyed, it's an aorist. Now the may, the hose here is slightly tricky, um, possibly be to be rendered something like when, uh, the word is left out in some manuscripts and it's ignored in the Vulgate translation. So it's um, it's something like um, not um, as when. Um, so not and we've got a, a monon here. So not only when you are understand in my presence parousia, but uh, now in my absence or more by much, so all the more in my absence. Parousia is a fairly common word in the New Testament. It's formed, the root is formed from the participle from the verb to be, with from, and then from parami, I am present, and then we get the abstract noun parousia, and of course it then is used to refer to the coming, to the second coming, and so on elsewhere in the New Testament. Uh, apousia is just formed by analogy with that. It's just apousia, and uh, from ap amy, and we saw the participle from that in earlier verse uh, in this book. But the ab the abstract noun itself is only here uh, in the Greek Bible, and very uncommon elsewhere. Uh, with fear and trembling, work out your own salvation. Now again, there's some tricky bits here. The may hose etc. up to mamu could be parenthetical. Paul is very fond of breaking his thought patterns up with parenthetical inserts. So some scholars have taken the metaphobu kai tromu following directly after the hupacusity. So just as you have always obeyed with fear and trembling, and then take, they take the next bit separately. This is an imperative, so work out your own salvation. Others take it as work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Again, um, you have to decide which which way you want to take that. Theoska estin ha energon en humin kai to thelen kai to energain hupetes eudokias. For God is, now we get a hot plus a participle from this uh, energio, to work in or to operate. So God is working in you or operating in you. Now we get two chi's here, both and. And we get two articular infinitives, to thelain and to in ergain. These are used then as nouns. So, um, for God is operating among or in you, it could mean among you, is another possibility for in, uh, both in your, that which you wish, that, that, that is, both in your intention and in your an ergain and your action. The articular infinitive turns the uh, verb into an, a noun, so it makes it essentially a gerund here. So, both with respect with respect to your intention and your action, hupates eudokias um, for the sake of understand his good pleasure. 
from you dock here. Panta poetic chorus gong guzmon kai dialogismon. Hina ginaisti amemptoi kai akerayoi. Technothiu amoma meson genias golias kai diatramines. En hois finesti hos fosteros en cosmo. Uh, I better finish off the sentence. Logon so es ep ekontes es kalkema emoi es hemeran Christu hoti uk es kenon edramon udi es kenon ekopiasa. Another one of Paul's very long sentences. So uh, imperative here do all things. Curis takes a genitive without. Gonguzmos is grumbling. It's an onomatopoetic word. Grumbling sounds like gonguzmos, so it's, it doesn't have any um, particular verbal roots. It's just an onomatopoetic word, but it's it's a quite common word. So do all these things without grumbling, and uh, dialogismos is debates. We get our word dialogue, of course, from that, but it has the sense of debating or arguing. Hina, in order that, genes that you might be, amemptoi kai akeraioi. This one is an alpha, the alpha is an alpha privative. The root here is from the verb memphomai, to blame. And here we get the adjective amemptos. Uh, so that you might be blameless, kai akeraioi. This again is an alpha privative. The root here is from keranumi, to mix. And so this is a very uh, common classical word. It only occurs a couple of times in the New Testament, but it means pure, undefiled, unmixed. So in order that you might become blameless and pure, uh, amoma blameless, this is another word, um, or faultless here, it's, an, it's really a, a synonym in some sense, it's from, mem, from the amemptoi. Uh, it's again, it's from alpha privative, and there is a verb, moma amai, which means to find fault with. So, faultless children of God, meson is used adverbially here, in the middle of a crooked generation, uh, sorry, well, generation which is crooked and diastamenes. This is a passive, perfect passive participle. Um, it comes from diastrepho, which means to twist or to distort. It's only used, uh, only here in Paul, um, often translated perverse. Uh, I think twisted or distorted is quite a nice rendering of this word. Um, this, this in fact, this verse in fact is uh, very close to uh, the verse in Deuteronomy 32.5 in the Septuagint, which uh, mentions tekna moma, uh, with a positive, mometa genia scolia kai diastramine. It's very similar. To, that's Deuteronomy 32.5. So Paul may be paraphrasing it here and turning it around because he uses the, the amoma rather than the momentos. Anyway, so it's blameless, sorry, faultless children of God in the middle of a generation which is scolia uh, uh, and, um, the, um, uh, and distorted or twisted uh, uh, from genea, meaning a generation, that's a uh, first declension feminine noun. Scolius means, again, these are very similar. Scolius means twisted. Crooked is the usual translation of this. En uh, hois finesti, now among whom, now this again is not clear, this is either a passive you are shown, you are being revealed uh, as Fosteris lights in the world or this could be an imperative middle so in which 
uh, sh show yourself forth as lights in the world. It's impossible to tell from the ending. So it's either passive or it could be middle. And it could be um, uh, simply passive indicative or it could be imperative, depending on which way you take it. Fosteres, a foster is a lamp. It's used in the Septuagint of the heavenly bodies, the lights in the sky, i.e. the sun and the moon. Uh, it, in the New Testament, the word only appears here and in Revelation 21.11. So, in which, well, you are seen as lights in the world, or in which shine as lights in the world. Ep ekontes, holding uh, firmly, to get the epi in it, it's, it's epi plus echo, holding firmly to the word of life, not clear exactly what that means at this point, uh, whether it's referring to, to Jesus or whether it's referring to the Old Testament is not clear. As kalkem emoi, as hemeron Christu, for the, or, or perhaps as a boast for me in the day of Christ, hoti uk es kenon edromen, that so a boast that uh, edromon is the aorist from treko it's an irregular verb uh, you get treko dramumai ed, uh, edromon is the aorist uh, so so a boast that i did not run as canon in vain nor uh, this is from copy as do to work kopos means labor but i did not labor in vain Paul says this sort of thing in other places uh, as well in his writings, the idea of running, this metaphor of um, a race and running in vain is mentioned elsewhere. Alla e kai spendamai epi te thusia kai let urgia tes pistios humon kairo kai sung kairo pasin humin Tode ao to kai humes kerete kai sun kerete moi. Now the a kai is slightly uh, tricky here. Um, it's probably like it's something like but um, even if we mustn't forget the kai's here. They're very important. This can mean even or also. So but even if spend am I, well I am poured out. Uh, like uh, as a libation, it's a good classical word to pour out the libation. Epitathusia upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith. Now again, what does that, what does that really mean? Well, um, the one can take this as a hen diadas, that is two things separated uh, by a chi which we take in English as one thing. So we could take this as the sacrificial uh, service. Uh, it's literally, I am poured out upon the sacrifice and the service. And then we've got another one of these genitives, um, perhaps for your faith, with your faith as the object, taking this as an objective genitive. Uh, and there are other interpretations. It's really a metaphor here for um, religious sacrifice. And, of course, we get our word liturgy from this. Uh, lite is a prayer, and the urg root is from that urg of working. So liturgy is literally the working out of prayer, uh, but often used in the sense of service here. Cairo, so I rejoice and I rejoice with you all. Tode alto, and for the same reason also, you are re now probably uh, not imperative here, it could be imperative, it's not clear exactly, but for the same reason, you also perhaps are rejoicing and rejoicing with me, or it could be taken as imperatives here. And that's the end of that next section from chapter 2.